Now to start things off, we are literally starting completely from scratch. And the first thing that we want to do is get our framework set up. So we're going to be installing Silex. We're going to be using version 1.3. And if we head over to the download section, this will give us uh, instructions of how to download this. Now we're going to be using a few dependencies uh, installed via Composer. If you don't have Composer installed, you're going to need to head over to getcomposer.org and follow the download instructions there. But we use them for most of our courses, so you should be good. Okay, so let's pull this into our project. I'm currently within the directory uh, that I have just opened in my browser and this is completely empty at the moment. So let's pull this in, but let's choose uh, version 1.3 for this and we'll wait for this to download. So now that this is done, obviously we have our vendor folder with our dependencies in and we have our composer.json file. Now we want to think about the directory structure here because we obviously have views which we're going to be uh, showing to the user. We're going to have a public directory which will store our CSS file and our index.php file to boot up our application. And we'll also have our general vendor app folder. So let's just start with our app folder. We'll be creating a few more files in here like our models and our providers, uh, but for now we'll leave this empty. We want to create our views folder, which will store all of our views. Again, we'll get to creating a view uh, in just a moment to test things out. And we want to create a public directory. This is the public facing directory. So inside of here, we'll need a CSS directory for our style sheet. And we'll be doing that later as we get to uh, building this up. And of course, inside of public, we want an index.php file uh, so when we land on this, uh, this is the first thing that we see. So we also need an HT access file. And this is really important because of the way that we're going to be set up routing. Uh, we want everything to be rooted in the right place. Now, if you're using something other than Apache, you'll need to go ahead and uh, use specific configuration. For example, if you're using Nginx, uh, but you should be good if you are using Apache just to go ahead and copy this. And I'll leave a link in the course downloads for this if you don't want to type it out. Uh, either way, all this is going to do is it's going to redirect uh, all of the routing to index.php to be picked up by Silex. So inside of index.php then, obviously the first thing we want to do is require in uh, our vendor autoload.php file. So let's do this now just so we are set up and ready to go. We want to go back a directory into vendor and the file we want to load in is autoload.php. So now within here we have all of our dependencies loaded in and we can just start to use them. So to boot up our Silex app then we just want to create a variable for this and we want to say new Silex application and that's it. So we can test this out by just doing a var dump on app just to make sure that everything looks good. And if we head over to our browser just here, give this a refresh and head over to public, we can see that this is being dumped out. Perfect. So now we can set up our first route within Silex. If you've worked with other micro frameworks like Slim, this will be very similar and uh, should make complete sense. But really the first thing I want to do is set debug on just because if I make any mistakes, this will go ahead and give me a stack trace of the errors. But of course, make sure this is off in production. So now we can create our first route and this is going to be for the home page. And inside of here, we just have our closure. We can go ahead and use app in case we need that. And we are actually going to be uh, needing this a little bit later. And what we can do in here just to test this out is return home. And now the last thing we want to do down here is just go ahead and run our app pretty straightforward. And now on the home page, we see home. Great. So now that we have our first route set up, we need to think about our auto loading. Now we're going to be auto loading from this directory. We're going to be creating one model and we're going to be creating one service provider. And of course, if you expand on this, you want auto loading set up here. So to do this, obviously we modify our composer.json file and we want to choose the standard of auto loading. Now in this case, it is PSR4 and we want to choose a vendor namespace. Now I've decided to call this awesome image 
So I'm going to set this to AI and I'm going to uh, add a backslash and then escape this backslash. And then I'm, I want to load these from the app directory. So essentially, uh, if you're not too sure what PSR for namespacing is, we have a course on this, so you can go ahead and follow it. Either way, uh, what we're doing here is we're just loading by a namespace anything within this directory. And we'll see how this works when we create our first model. And we'll be doing that in the next part. So now that we have our composer.json file updated, we just want to run composer dump autoload. And we can pass in the optimize flag and that will just uh, set all that up for us. So the only thing that's left to do, just so we are well on our way to get this started, is to create our first view. Now, of course, we don't just create lots of different views. We want to create a folder in here for our templates. So we're only going to have one template here. This is just going to represent our general application. If you've worked with Slim before, you'll understand uh, the kind of concept of templating. And I'm just going to call this app.twig. And inside of here, I'm just going to create a basic document layout and I can give this a title. So something like awesome image. So within the body, then this is where our content needs to go. And we can create this within a div with a class of container and we can style this out later uh, to whatever we want. Now inside of here, we have our block and we can give this whatever name we want. So I'm just going to call it main. And then here we just end that block. So now any new template files that we create, we can extend this template and place any content just in here. So let's just create a home.twig file. So home.twig and we can extend that base template. So extends and we just provide the path to this, which is templates app.twig like so. And just down here, we can create our block. So our block main and we want to just end our block just here and we can write home just in there. Now we've obviously set up our templates, but we don't actually have a way to render these. So from index.php from within this, we want to render out that view and eventually we'll be passing down all of the images that we've gone ahead and uploaded. So we first of all need to install Twig. So we can do this with Composer. So let's Composer require Twig Twig and wait for this to download. And now we want to use Silex's service provider to give uh, Twig functionality to our application. And this is really straightforward to do because Silex comes with a service provider. We just want to register a new Silex provider Twig service provider and then we want to pass some options in now the only option that we really need is the path to our templates and of course we use dir we're going to go back a directory into views because this is where all of our templates are stored so now what we can do is within here rather than just return a string we can actually return uh, or rather render a view now we know that the view we want to render is home for this route so we say return app, we access twig because that's now within our application. And then we use the render method to uh, render a particular view. Now in our case, that's home.twig. So we can now head over here, give this a refresh. And now we see exactly the same thing, but you may have noticed the title has changed. And that's because we are now placing home, which remember is over in our home.twig file into our base template just here. Great. So we've now essentially just set up our framework really quick and easy setup. There's of course a few more things that we're going to need to add in here, like in the next part when we start to look at our database and we're going to be looking at setting up our database, connecting and also our image model. So let's jump over and do that one now.